we're talking foot. I was I I I was gonna try and what's that song? We're talking baseball. <laughs> I was gonna start doing that with the football, and I realized no, you're, I have no you're not you're not you're not your singing career is now over. Yes, it, well, it was over before it began, but that's yeah, I, I was like, no, let's not do that. So that's why I did nice and low. Uh, we are recording just about an hour before the Monday night game. So whatever we say here, obviously, is not going to have an impact since by the time you watch <laughs> this video, the game will already be started. And that's okay because we have talked just even just on this channel and on every channel we've been on, we have talked more than enough about the Harbaugh brothers this week. So we don't need to talk about that anymore. We'll talk about it on our next show because Jim and I will be back on Wednesday uh, for the Playbook ADS podcast, uh, Mark Lawrence will be off, so I'll be hosting. Jim Vice will be here, Tony Mejia, Victor uh, King, and Tony Mejia. So we're going to have a really fun day on Wednesday, Jim. Are you ready, by the way, to, to sit in for the entire 90 minutes, and that includes talking college football? Well, I'll, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not as um, as deeply involved in college as I am in, the, in uh, pro football and college basketball and, you know, but – it, no, Andy. Uh, you didn't mention Andy, isn't it? Andy? That's right, Andy. Wow, okay. that's a lot of people. And Andy Isco. Well, yeah, we got a good. We and Andy has been red hot. Um, God, I think he's won like twelve big plays in a row or something. It's been incredible. <laughs> Why doesn't he give me some of those? I, I don't know. Money. Well, he he probably doesn't like you. You're not that yeah, likable. I think you're right about that. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's coming up on Wednesday. Today, what we do every Monday is recap the weekend in the NFL. Next weekend is going to be awesome because we got Thursday games, Friday games, Saturday games, Sunday games, Monday games. So there's going to be a lot to recap next week. Uh, college football as well. This is just such a. This is. Do you think this is this week has to be considered like right up there as one of the best weeks in in, in the year as a football fan? It's it's a great time, uh, and you know, I mean, if you go back a little bit, we just had we had baseball, basketball, football, everything going on at the same time. Now we got hockey, we got Canadian stuff. You got, you know, it, it's when they the over the only problem is, it for me and what I try to do, it's 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 too much of a burden to try to be good at all those sports at one time. You just can't focus, so yeah. that's why, that's why I kind of just focus on a little bit over here, a little bit over there, a little bit over there, but mainly on what the primary sport is at the moment I hear which you. right now is football, especially with college basketball. I would, I would, you know, when I had a big staff, uh, I, I had a lot of people helping me and I could just go off their notes and stuff, but uh, now I don't have that kind of staff anymore. So I'm just focused. I mean, the last two weeks, I mean, la Saturday and Sunday last week, I was 17 and three this past week, I was 11 and six. That's the Saturday and Sunday stuff, and twelve and five in the pro in NFL. Uh, so I'm real happy with what I'm the results I'm getting, but I can't focus on the other sport. I mean, honestly, there's only 24 hours in the day, and I'm not as young as I used to be. What was your favorite pick this week? Oh boy. Um. Well, <laughs> holy Jesus. Uh well, I, Tampa Bay was probably so obvious. It was it's kind of sickening to even talk about it. <laughs> it was it was it was that easy. Um, I mean, I lost. Well, I'll tell you what I lost with. Not, but yeah, give me your most disappointing loss. Which well, one was just was stuck no, in I'm, your I'm craw? Totally, I'm totally I'm disappointed in myself for picking the Rams over the Eagles. Okay, that's, I can, I can see that. Me. That's on me. I'm not disappointed on picking the Colts over the Lions because I had a lot of – there was a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, that we talked expect, about it, yeah. You would expect a little bit of a letdown off the – And there's no the letdown. They just keep firing on all cylinders. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. But then I was really wrong on the Rams. I was wrong on the Rams two weeks ago against Miami, and I did it again. Yeah. This time I made, it, I made the same mistake twice. Yeah, no and, more. Um, I think they're. I think they might be done because Seattle. Well, off, their offensive line is shit. Yeah, they can't hold anybody up. I mean, Stafford can play, and the wide receivers can do a lot of damage. And not bad in the running game, but their offensive line is absolutely awful. Yeah, awful. it's not going to get any better. 
No, so, it can't. It won't get any better. No. Um, we amazing game. I didn't wasn't on it, but the amazing to me was the Dallas Cowboys actually won a game. They actually beat somebody. And the regression that you're seeing out of the Washington is is really incredible. But no. I mean, the kid the kid did get hurt. He had rib rib plum, and you're seeing some regression off the offensive coordinator who has a ser- history of being of regressing at the end of his years. You know the um, the season that's been his history. Well, keep and- in mind too, Jim. Um- when a team and you tell me, I mean, but when a team overachieves and I, and I think a team like Washington, you look at the talent. I was remember, I was watching the game a couple of weeks ago and I remember saying to myself, that's their number two wide receiver. They couldn't have went out in the trade deadline. And I mean, Pittsburgh did, and that team did. I mean, what do you, why? I mean, they got, what was it? Noah Brown is their number two <laughs> wide receiver. You got a rookie quarter, give him some more help. So you could just tell, and, and that just reminds you that, you know what, this is just, they're not as talented as their record has, has shown. And, and I think that's what it is more than anything is that I don't think it's because they're choking or they're just, they just, they're, they're just not as talented as, uh, as they're going to be. I, I would have to, I would have to agree with that. I don't think there's any choking involved. I think mm-hmm. that you're just seeing a team coming back, to the pack. You're seeing, you're yep. regret, they started out very hot. They couldn't back maintain that. And, and you know, at the end of the season or you get to the middle of the season, there's a lot more film on these players on what their tendencies are or what the offensive coordinator is calling, what their defensive coordinator is calling, and you can make adjustments. And the other coaches in the league, some of them are actually pretty smart, and they make adjustments, and it takes things away. This kid, I mean, if the kid can play well against man, but he can't play well against zone, if he's if he's throwing well on in in down the middle, sure. But opposed to out on, the, you know, they make adjustments and they and they pick up tendencies, and they, and for these professional coaches and athletes, they're the best in the world, and they they can figure things out. And they'll figure it out even more so next year because, because as we know, the coaching staff will get in and start their film usually Sunday night or very early on Monday morning for the next week's next Sunday's game. And then that's it. Once you get to, so they got like three or four days and that's it. But once you get to the off season, you have months of, we have to figure out how to, you know, how to beat this guy. It's in our division. We got to figure out how to beat that guy, or what, you know, who's playing well, who's not. We got all the time in the world to to study these guys, and we got film. But during the regular season, even though they have film, like you said, because it's now week whatever, week twelve, they only have a couple of days, so they do get the chance to 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 figure things out more. Uh, but they'll have a lot more time in the off season. And that's when you have to see players uh, and, and whether or not they make that jump from year one to year two or year two to year three, especially after the rookie season. Well, you got to remember it's not static in either side. I mean, even, even your, um, your, your, your offensive people on the Washington side or any team are going to change their schemes as well, because they realize that the other, their opponents are going to change because of what you've been doing. So if you don't make adjustments in the off season, then you're not really earning your money. You know, I mean, bottom line is sure. you, you need to, you need to work year round. It's a year round business. Especially, and, yeah, especially with all the movement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even in college, it's the same thing. Oh yeah. College. Well, Speaking you know, of college, I had my, um, my, my, uh, the one that stuck in my crawl, which, which was the uh, UCLA USC game. And I had UCLA and five and a half. And they're winning basically and covering the entire game. And they're down by, what are they down by? I think they're down by four, no, three. Yeah, three. Uh, and they have the ball, five, six minutes to go. They got the ball. And by the way, they had just, USC just scored a touchdown to take the lead. And it was like their first lead in like two hours. And now there's six minutes to go in the game and UCLA has ball fourth down and inches at their own 30. 
and they decide to go go for it. Of course, I'm saying no. I don't want you going for it because if you don't get it, you put this team in perfect position to score more points. So what does he do? He goes for it. They get a quarterback sneak. They get stopped. USC kicks a field goal to go up six, and they and they lose the game. And I lose the game by a half a point. And I had the and I had the same side and lost it also. Yes. Yeah. So that was really infuriating, especially when USC has been like this awful road favorite team. Uh, under Lincoln Riley. That might have been their first ever cover under Lincoln Riley as a road favorite, if I recall. Well, you got to remember, that's not much of a road game for those teams. So No, but it was really, uh, yeah. That, they're, that, they're, that, they're, they're, they're within a cab ride of each other. <laughs> yeah. So, But USC's got a big one against Notre Dame uh, on uh, Saturday night. And that would be huge for Notre Dame, of course, uh, with them trying to get to the championship. Meanwhile, uh, back to the NFL uh, the, the one that was the most infuriating for me with the bears. Um, they did cover, uh, but you know, I, I put, I put some money on the money line. I really thought they were going to win the game. And then, uh, they got very fortunate to go into overtime. The first onside kick successful onside kick of the season. Unbelievable. They did it. They I did know. it. And it was incredible. And then they get the one pass they needed. They kick the field goal, 50 yarder. They go to overtime. They get the coin toss, which I did not want. I did not want the Bears to have to score a touchdown. I didn't think that would go well. Sure enough, it doesn't. You see Caleb Williams stand in the pocket for 15 seconds in that one play in overtime? I don't know if you noticed it. Well, I didn't, but the, the and one he gets problem, sacked. He got the sacked. One pro, the one problem that Caleb has had, and they've tried to train it out of him, is when he doesn't when he doesn't hit his first receive the first read that's open, they want him to to run. Because the problem he's had is he's holding on to the ball, looking for a second and a third. Yes. Receiver, and that's when he's getting in trouble. Yeah. Not only is he getting sacked, but he's throwing the ball into coverage. Yes. So they want him to use his legs. And you noticed in the first game when the with the new uh, offensive coordinator, he ran the ball very well. And they need him to do that because he's not picking up the second and third option yet he's still young i mean god he's a, these are kids coming out of college they will learn they he will learn he'll be he'll be a star he's good he's got all the talent in the world um yeah it, it you know he he, he got us his tendency is to stand there and hold the ball and you know, it's not gonna work <laughs> no but and that one was like uh yeah you, you know if you get a chance to see it it is just I, I honestly i'm not exaggerating i honestly think it's the longest time i've ever seen a quarterback stand there no pressure you could tell that there was like a three-man rush so the d linemen weren't even moving they were like exhausted and they were just and, and he's standing there and the crowd's going crazy it's like what are you doing because all you had to do was just run if he wanted to just to pick up some yardage and he gets sacked. That's it. How do you get sacked when you're holding on to the ball and you got 15 seconds to make a decision in the pocket and you got sacked? He wasn't running around for his life. He was standing there and he got sacked. You got to remember something. These are kids. I know, but that's we're, the difference. Between... We're, bet, we're, betting on, we're betting on inexperienced kids. <laughs> okay, oh, that's, yeah. on, that's on us. It's not really on him. It's on us. Well, that um, one, that one play that that killed them, and then that was it for them. Uh, I was actually disappointed about their defense, you know, because uh, the defense played really well at the end of last year, and if they score whatever, what did they score? 24, 27 points. You score 24, 27 points with Caleb Williams in his rookie season, you better win that football game. That that was on the defense. They just could not stop Minnesota. Well, they need a better head coach. They need to, to move on from what they have, and. Um... You know, I'd like to see Vrabel go in somewhere like that. I mean, I he think will. He, He'll get a I job. He should have already had one, honestly. Yeah. Well, I think the problem, the uh, the knock on Vrabel, which is why he's he's going to have to go somewhere in particular uh, at Tennessee, was that he was being a little bit too old school, a little bit too set in his ways. And you know, every you know today, there's a lot of owners out there that want that fresh, new, young guy that's going to be knowing what's going on to all the newness of the league, and and that's not Vrabel. Vrabel has got that Belichick in him, which is good. I think he's a very good head coach. Um, now, let me ask you a question about that. 
Okay, of the who are the best four teams in football right now in the NFL? Detroit would be one. I'm going to say the Bills two. Then I'm going to just taking a look here. I'm going to go with the um I'm going to go Eagles. with the Eagles three. Okay. And of course and, the Lions. No, I said the Lions. The Lions. None of those are fresh young kids. They're all experienced football people, the coaches. None of those are fresh young kids. No, well, Sirianni is relatively young. Yeah, I mean, but he's, he's not, not that young. He's got to be in his 30s, 40s. Yeah, I, I mean, you don't want to be hiring any. But I, I think okay, that so the my, – My point is this. These fresh young kids that are coming in with this analytical bull – yeah, and, and, and feeding you know the Staley that was out at the chart the Chargers and all that garbage. <clears throat> no, no, yeah. they, they're not going to win. You got to run the ball. You got to pass block. You got to run block. You got to you. You just play football the way it's always been meant to be. The and and who said a couple of years ago that running backs don't pay them? They're not worth the money. Yeah, well. Okay, who had 250 yards rushing the other night? Those days are over. Barkley. Okay. And that's that's right there. That's the difference with the Eagles. If if Barkley is not on that team, this is last year's Eagles team. Maybe they're just a little bit better. I'm Maybe I don't know. The Lions and the Eagles are the two best NFC teams right now, and they're yeah. going to and, and without injuries creeping into this into the mix between now and the end, they will be in the NFC championship game. The question is the AFC because the chiefs, although they keep winning, they do not look good doing it. So, you know, I, I got to give the bills a shot. I got to say the chiefs, but I, I have question marks on how they're winning. They just, they're right on the doorstep of losing a lot of games. Yeah. I mean, they, they I, lost. Yeah. I mean, they, they win, but they're, they're just not impressive no. at all. No, it's it's not going to be this year. I, I'm not feeling it. We'll see unless next they, year. Unless they can open it up. Yeah, but again, the rice is out for the year, so I, I and they have to get. We'll find out how they are when Pacheco comes back. That's so big, that, that'll yeah. give us a real good indication of whether or not, especially we know what happened last year is that when he went to the postseason, everybody gave up on him. They were the dogs in every game. No way the Chiefs are going to win here. No way the Chiefs are going to win there. And they just kept defying uh, everybody. This is a game this week. They're 13-point favorite over the over Vegas. And Vegas, of course, Minshew's out for the season. They really don't have a solid quarterback at this point. I, the Chiefs, if the Chiefs are going to win by margin in any game, this is the game to do it. How are the this, running backs for, the, for Vegas? Are they still out? Well, they're hurt everywhere. And they have, and they also have a court, a coaching issue. They're, this coach will not be there next year. No, not at all. Um, By the way, the quarterback, uh, the kid uh, who's going to return to the lineup this week, was actually the starter in the game in, the, in their upset win last year in Kansas City, uh, Aiden O'Connell. But the difference was they had their running back was really playing well, um, and that's the I think that's the biggest difference this year's team is that uh, I don't know what happened there because well I'm going to tell you Andy Reid is pissed. He he Andy he Reed. is pissed at how they lost the game in, in Buffalo. I was talking and about Las Vegas. He's, yeah, I know. But Andy Reid has laid the law down. And the players have said we need to start winning like we are the Chiefs. Yeah. This well. is the game if they they might win this game by 30 points. Just to make a statement. Yeah. Cuz so they haven't done it all year. It's a Friday, national TV. So show everybody what you I got. I would not I would not bet my money on the Raiders in this game. <laughs> oh, who would, right? Well, wow. somebody somebody will have Yeah. <laughs> They're crazy. No, don't do it. Um, yeah, taking a look at the playoff picture here, as you can see, the Chiefs will start in the AFC. You got the Bills or the bye this week, the Steelers. Yeah, so that we talked about that Steeler Brown game last week. You referenced the snow. On, on our show last week and exactly what we got. I mean, how can you not, this is what we love about football is watching the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers and an AFC North matchup. And you got the snow. The only thing that sucked is that the Browns stink. 
You know, it would have been really nice if it would have been two really good old school, you know, uh, cal- playoff caliber mm-hmm. teams. But like you said last week, like you predicted, the Browns played like it was their Super Bowl. And, and it was. They, and, and they got was. the win, uh, beating the Steelers. And uh, that they 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 wouldn't go away. I give them credit. And, uh, yeah. I got to give Jameis Wiz- Win- Winston some credit. That I mean, I know he has flaws. Nobody's going to question his ability to play quarterback or throw the ball. He can do that. The problem is he throws it to the other team a lot. Yeah. And but I'll tell you what, he is one hell of a leader, and the players love him. They he, love he, he's him. Not, he's probably the best backup quarterback in the league. That's what he is. I, I yes, I agree. Yeah. If you're trying to win his championship and you have serious aspirations for that, you bring him on your team. If you got a young quarterback. And you like the young quarterback, but you're trying to win a Super Bowl, like say Denver or something. And please Next don't year. bring back Watson. Please don't. don't Watson. Please don't, do not bring back Deshaun Watson. Oh, oh, there's no way Deshaun Watson. Oh my God! Back. Don't please don't bring him back. No, there's no way he he can't come. Back. They're, they're going to get. It looks like they're getting rid of everybody anyway. I mean, Plus, they can't bring back uh, Stefanski, can they? I I I would keep Stefanski. I think Stefanski. Has been held back by Haslam, the owner. I think they never wanted. To, he didn't want to what play. Do you think Watson. he wants to come back? I. Well, you know, it's a head coaching job, and he gets paid a lot of money. Okay, well, so I, mean, I know you can go somewhere else. Somebody will definitely you hire also, him. You, you know, you got to look at the other side of all of this. They have wives and children and grand. I mean, they live there. They don't want to move oh, uprooting sure. and going to another yeah. city and all that. I mean, it's a big, it's a big hassle. I think he should stay. I think he's a good coach. I think Watson, I think Haslam's got to keep his fingers out of the pie. Well, you, you don't know if that's going to happen, that's for sure. And yeah, no. uh, by the way, I'm going to interview uh, Fred Greetham. Um, uh, matter of fact, I was, I'm going to find out today he was going to check out the uh, practice schedule this week because we're going to, uh, I'm going to have an interview with him. We're going to talk about what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. So uh, look out for that interview. Uh, that'll be available. Um, you can check it out, especially over on the R Lads football channel. Uh, fact is, I've got a good opportunity to find out everything that's going on this season with Cleveland, Deshaun Watson, Stefanski, the organization, what's going on, what went wrong. So look out for that interview coming soon, hopefully this week. Um, and then you got the Texans. Remember, we talked about this last week. Mm-hmm. That's that was my that was my favorite pick of the week. Was picking Tennessee as a live uh, dog, uh, an upset pick. That's a great play. Great and play. they came through. Um, remember, we talked about how Tennessee is one of those teams that we felt was not going to give up, that they were going to get better because they got the a The thing is, Levis, Levis has actually become a little better. Yeah. He's actually looking like a, he can play. Yeah. I mean, he does have all the tools. He just needs time. He he's he's one of those quarterbacks that needs time to develop. Yep. And he knew wasn't going to be an instant. See, Bo Nix. Why did Bo Nix succeed? Why did Brock Purdy succeed? They had tons of experience in college football. Tons of experience. They can pick it things up right in the NFL. Levis had like two years. That's it. And 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 he was playing for Kentucky for crying out loud uh, for those two years. He sat behind the bench at Penn State. He just needs time. And he's got a really good offensive coordinator that uh, had as a head coach, the Callahan kid. So I know the people are talking about the Texans. You know, uh, uh, they're going to go after a quarterback. No, I don't see unless Levis digresses the, the rest of the season. If he just shows improvement, they've got their quarterback. Oh, he's got all the tools. He has got every tool you need, as long as he has it between his ears. He he can he can be a quarterback in the NFL, no question. And then we've got the two teams playing tonight, the Chargers and the Ravens. They're what the again, Broncos. I'm, I'm excited about watching this game. Uh, they're the Broncos. And the Broncos, again, we talked about this last week. I, I just I just get this feeling that these seven teams are the seven teams. I think Denver, I know they're the most vulnerable, but they don't look vulnerable to me. Uh, they look like, uh, look, they're going to struggle a little bit here and there because they're still got a young quarterback and – they're not used to being in this position, and they are uh, the only team I think that anybody can catch. But uh, I don't know if I still think the Broncos will be able to hold off Miami, and I don't know. Cincinnati might be the only other team, but they're so far behind. 
But the Dolphins well, are the game you know, back I'm, now. I'm going to tell you something. If if the Miami Dolphins do not win this week, and I don't really think they will, because the weather is absolutely horrendous in Green Bay this year, this week. The Green Bay game. Oh God, the, the weather there is going to be absolutely atrocious. <laughs> and well, you got a war. You got a, you got a Miami team going up there, and you got the Siberian cold front yeah. coming through, coming through Wisconsin, and. You got this Miami team going there to play, and oh my God! But if if Miami loses this game, it opens it up much more for the Bengals. And in my opinion, the Bengals passing attack is the hardest attack in the league to stop. Well, it, remember we the, said last week that if the Bengals can beat Pittsburgh. This week, their schedule is really nice, and they can right. go on a three, four game winning streak, which is what they're going to have to do, and get themselves back into this race. So the this question week, is, who the hell's going to stop the opponent? Their defense is horrible. Yeah, they need to make it. They've got the bye <laughs> week to make adjustments, and I am going to talk to my Cincinnati Bengals insider, um, John Sheeran. I believe it's Wednesday. So, again, look out for that interview, uh, and uh, John and I will talk, and I'm going to find out what's going on with this Bengals defense. they got the same defensive coordinator. they got a lot of the same personnel. What's going on? What's the main issue? I know the secondary really killed them last year. Uh, it's probably still some of those issues this year, but I'll find out. I'll find out you know, what the whole deal is, and maybe the defensive coordinator's day is numbered. I don't know. I know they like them, though. I know they like the D coordinator, so – I don't know. Well, like you said, it doesn't make any sense that they've fallen off so bad because they weren't that terrible before, but they are now. Yeah. So we'll find out, and uh, that'll be another good interview. Um, and then, yeah, they're, again, you can see with the Colts, I just don't – Colts don't have anything. They're not going to the playoffs. Um, what is interesting, though, speaking of the Colts, is that AFC South because the Texans uh, – Remember, we were talking in the in the beginning of the season, and and, and Mark brought this up, and and I I, I want to talk to Mark about this the next time we're on the air with him in a couple of weeks. <laughs> but Mark talked about how there was a, some sort of a, a history of teams that I triple their win total, I believe it, it was from one year to the next. There's some sort of like major regression they get the next year. Because Houston went from like a three team to whatever yeah, they were. You're right. Yeah. And, and and so he expected a big regression, but the problem in the division is there's nobody there to to compete with them. <laughs> so if, if there was, let's say Jacksonville had had the year they had a couple of years ago, then I think Jacksonville would probably be the team to beat right now in that division. But you know, Houston's gonna sleepwalk their way to the AFC South title. Well, they probably will because, like you said, there's nobody in that division doing anything that could catch them. So, But they are having major regression. They've had injuries. They had the two wide receivers. One's out for the year, and the other missed a lot of time. Um, and, and, you know, Stroud, you got to figure he's going to come down, down off the high horse that he had last year. Um, there, it, there is always going to be regression with somebody that takes off like a rocket ship. So, yeah. And he did, and we see the same thing in – in, with the with the commanders, you know the, so it's going to happen. It always happens. But these are talented young men, and with proper coaching, they're going to bounce back and have great careers. Um, okay, and in the NFC, we told uh, we mentioned the top two teams. Well, now Seattle's flipped to the third seed because of their win against Arizona. It was a defensive slugfest in the rain in the Northwest on Sunday. Atlanta still sits at four. Minnesota. Uh, they, they that win was huge for Minnesota because they were going kind of backwards ish, but they've now solidified themselves for sure. They're going to the postseason. Green Bay uh, gets some a little bit of revenge, even though the Niners are the walking wounded right now. And then there's Washington still sitting at seven, uh, as far as the playoff picture is concerned. I want to talk about those uh, the two, uh, the South and the West. So first, let's start with the West because Seattle, as we look at the standings. Seattle and Arizona are now tied, uh, as you see there, at 6-5. and five. Rams and Niners are only a game back. But the Niners are too banged up right now. I just There's no way I see the San Francisco team, especially with how tough this division. I just I just don't see it. So 
Uh, and, and the Rams still have the talent, but it, it's looking like it's going to be a Seattle, Arizona. I totally agree. Uh, the Rams offensive line is absolutely horrendous. They did it two weeks ago against Miami and last night against Philadelphia. That offensive line cannot protect Stafford. He cannot, he, he's not mobile enough at this age to, to get out of the pocket and, and, and go downfield. He's not getting any protection and, the Rams, I'm going to say this. The Rams and Niners are going to miss the playoffs, both of them. Yeah, it's looking like it. Yep. And the question is, um, will both Seattle and Arizona get in? That is very possible. One well, of those- Arizona's, Arizona's going to upset Minnesota this week. Oh, and by the way, next weekend after that, it's a rematch between Arizona and Seattle. So, But uh, that's back in Arizona. Back in Arizona, don't have to deal with the weather conditions. They just saw each other. Uh, so, look, I think it's very possible that both of those teams get in because if Washington keeps playing like they're playing, that will open up that spot, uh, which is right now at number seven in the NFC. And that's a vulnerable spot, as we talked about recently. And this is the team that I believe oh, is I, going I, to find a way to get in. I'm going to tell you something. Baker Mayfield – has made a believer out of me. I mean, he is, to me, he's the most valuable player in the league. He, even he with could be. With a losing record. The, he is playing like a monster. Yep. It, it's unbelievable what he's doing. And, you know, Cleveland ruin, ruins everybody. So he was there. In, yeah. You know, so, but the way he's playing, yep. it, it's just incredible how, how well he's playing. Absolutely and, incredible. And their schedule is, is very manageable. So right now they have put themselves in position to be just one game behind Atlanta, which means they're two games back with the loss that they got swept. But now they're only a game back or two games back, and we still have six games left in the season. So they have more than enough time to catch Atlanta and then put themselves in a position to try and take a one-game lead on Atlanta uh, the rest of the season. And uh, I don't know what Atlanta schedules uh, looking like. Well, they want to play the Chargers next week. Atlanta. Yes. Okay. Now, but the oh, Chargers look at this. Com- and then at Minnesota. The Chargers are coming off this game tonight, and we don't know what the hell is going to happen in this game. But the one bad thing about Atlanta, and this, especially when you got an, a good quarterback and a good coach, <laughs> Atlanta doesn't put any pressure on the quarterback. No. And you're going to let Herbert back there? to throw the ball against the Jim Harbaugh coach team. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. A lot of things can happen to change my opinion, but that's going to be a very tough spot. And you'll notice the current line, even though they are playing. Wait, wait, wait. are you about to give me, are you giving me a line for next week? The Chargers are actually favored. Are you giving me a line for what? What do you mean? For what? The Chargers are are one. Oh, you mean for tonight? Atlanta. And Atlanta for the oh okay you are giving okay well the Chargers should be a favorite over Atlanta not on the road yes you got to no it, it no it, yes. no no that's too you shouldn't be favored it might be pick them or one on either side but well I like that I like that's the not one much, that's not much of a favorite one well, I, I mean, like one you got to win the game yeah but, I like one I, I who's a better team. Um, coming off a, off a Monday night game, primetime game like tonight, which sure. could be very physical. Sure. And then having the tr- cross country against a rested Absolutely Atlanta right. team. Yes. Atlanta probably, Atlanta should probably be the favorite because of those elements. Like one or two. Yes. Okay. But, you know, that's. I don't know. Atlanta not putting pressure on the quarterback. Herbert will have a field day if they're healthy. And, and Atlanta is probably better off not as the home favorite anyway. <laughs> they'll, they'll be in a better position as the home dog. So, um, yeah. Because look, the next two weeks, this is going to decide the South. So they're game back Tampa. The next two weeks, Atlanta will be uh, the Chargers and then at Minnesota. Those are their next two games. Tampa Bay's next two games are going to be at Carolina and at home against Las Vegas. So 
This Say that again. Tampa Bay will be at Carolina this week. Oh my God! And, yeah, then, at, six, and then at home six, against six, Las Vegas. They're a six-point favorite against. On the you road. keep telling me the lines. I'm, I don't know the lines yet. You should. Well, actually, actually you I'm should, telling you what. Don't you? Well, I don't want to know the lines. I guess Why? the lines each week. You don't want to know? No. Why? Here, I can actually go ahead. Let me see if I can guess some of them. I don't know any of the lines. Well, um, I, I can tell you. <laughs> No, give me go ahead, give me a couple of games to see if I can predict. I mean, the I've already bet these games for God's sake. Well, go ahead and give me the, the lines. I mean, I mean the games. Let me see if I can predict the lines. All right, uh, Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. Uh, I'll say uh, it's got to be Pittsburgh, but let's see what are they going to do with this one. I'm going to say Pittsburgh one and a half. Cincinnati two and a half. Wow, what do you think about that? You right think, call? I think I don't. I think Pittsburgh is well coached, but in a different, in, in basically in a different generation. And I think I really here, here's what I'm going to say: this, if Miami loses, I love the Bengals. Yeah. Now, because it opens up the possibility of Cincinnati getting in. Let's if see. Miami wins, that's oh, going to really close the door on them. Yeah. Okay? So Cincinnati, to me, has the an unstoppable offense. You yeah. can't stop them. And Burrow is one of the best quarterbacks in the business with great wide receivers. The running back is good running and catching, but their defense sucks. But but can they catch Denver? That's the trick. Because Denver, they're two and a half games behind the Broncos. And um, I don't know. I mean. Who, who's the number six spot? Uh, all the, uh, the Ravens and the Chargers. That's why they're not getting caught. No, they're not getting caught. So it's the Broncos is the only vulnerable team. The Bengals are very. Oh, Bengals. get this. Here's a good one. Cincinnati. Second to last week of the season will host Denver. Mm. So they only got to get within one game of Denver before that. And game. then then beat them and then they'd have the tiebreaker, wouldn't they? Yep. Okay, so, there so you go. Even though they're two and a half now, they just got to get within a game and they got to get a game and a half in the next month. That's that's definitely attainable, especially with their schedule. But they got to beat Pittsburgh. Because after that, it's Dallas, Tennessee, and Cleveland. So if they well, can they, beat, they they should be, they should beat them all. They should beat all of them. Yeah. So they if they should. can beat Pittsburgh, they could go on a four-game winning streak and put their record at eight and seven. And then and then Denver would need to lose a couple. And Denver, see their schedule. They've got oh they got the uh, oh, they, oh they got the Browns. On Monday night, let's see. Let me think. What what's that? That line should be like. Uh, that's got to be what uh, seven and a half. Seven. <laughs> Did they flex them out of that game? I don't. You can't flex Monday night. You I'm, only uh, Sunday night. Okay, so well, well, Denver's <laughs> got Cleveland. Indianapolis. Well, that's not good. Those are two, and they're both at home. But just before the Cincinnati game, they got to go on the road to play the Chargers. So they it, need Cincinnati. It's not needs, over. It, it isn't over yet. No. They, they, they need either the Colts or the Browns to pull off an upset over Denver. Just one of the two. Um, and the other one uh, is the you know, we were talking about we talking about Tampa Bay. So yeah, so Seattle, Arizona. If you had to pick one of those two right now, knowing Arizona is going to get the home game with them in a couple of weeks, they're still tied. So Arizona still has kind of an edge since they got the home game. Do you think Arizona or Seattle will come out ahead? Hmm. You had to put your money on it. Huh. <sighs> Let me see what the odds are. Well, but what what are the what are the other games that have to look at the schedule? Because schedule wise, yeah, uh, Arizona uh, is. Well, you already said Arizona this week is going to be taking on uh, Minnesota on the road. Then the back with Seattle, 
After that, it's pretty good. They get New England at home. They get Carolina on the road. They get the Rams on the road. That'll be tough. And their last game of the season is is tough. They have San Francisco at home. Seattle. Yeah, if San Francisco's out of it, that might be a cakewalk. Seattle, after the Arizona game, I mean, after the, oh, this week, they're playing the Jets. So that's a win. And definitely. What the line is, knowing knowing how they've been <laughs> killing, the jet, killing us with these Jet lines, I, dude, there is no possible way they're making the Jets the favorite this week. So I've got to believe it's going to be, I'm going to say three. Two and a half. Okay. Seattle favorite. They're finally uh, wising up. So Seattle, that's a good bet, taking Seattle on that one. I think you already bet Seattle. You said you already made bets. You definitely bet that one. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so after the, after the Arizona matchup, they get two games at home. And unfortunately, they're very tough games. Seattle, well, if you're a Seattle fan, Seattle will host Green Bay and Minnesota. That That's hard. Then they so got to you basically, basically off of that, you'd have to favor Arizona. Yeah, because then after that, they got to go to Chicago and the Rams. That's a much tougher schedule than, uh, than Arizona's schedule. Yeah, you'd have to favor Arizona in that spot. And Arizona yeah. gets the home game against Seattle. Maybe, you're basically Seattle needs going, a sweep. You're basically going off schedule. What's what's coming up? Either we're looking down the road. So if everybody's playing to their ability, Arizona definitely has a better schedule. So Seattle needs to sweep. They have to sweep them. They've got to beat them again. Oh, if they swept them, that would be that would be the end of it. Yeah. Because if they let Arizona beat them and split the series, Arizona then probably goes up a game. With that schedule, they won't be caught. Right. Let me take a look at the uh, – let's see. I want to see what the oh, – here they are, division winners. I want to see what they have. What do you think the odds are, the division winner, for uh, for that? I Is don't – Even? Well, well, actually, Arizona probably should be favored based on the schedule. Probably. Are they giving me access denied? I took off my VPN. I don't. I don't know. Anyway, Arizona, I can't look at the odds. based on the based on the schedule, you have to say Arizona is a little bit of a favorite. Maybe one ten, maybe one twenty, maybe 110, 120. Based on the schedule. So at this point, we know Minnesota's in Green Bay. They're definitely going to make it. So that's seven spot. It's going to come down to Washington, Arizona, and more than likely Tampa Bay, those three teams. Or I should say Seattle, Arizona, loser, Washington, and Tampa Bay. And I'm, I'm taking Tampa Bay. Well, I hope they make it. Uh, they've won the last two in that division. I think they're better. They've got to be healthy. you got to get those receivers back. They've lost that. Well, they got Evans back. Yeah. But one. Good, got, Goodwin's not coming back. You got to do something there. I mean, but yeah. Well, then again, uh, you know, I shouldn't even look at the seventh spot for Tampa because they could win the division. So if they win the division, then Atlanta would have to be battling it out with Washington well, and Arizona. Well, yeah, then then Atlanta becomes a wild card. Yep. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the way that it looks. Uh, Thursday's game. What is okay? We got three games on Thursday, so. Again, we're going to talk more about this on Wednesday's Playbook uh, ATS podcast show. But um, and and last week you gave that early weather forecast with the, with Cleveland, and and you basically just let everybody know just a quick observation on that Green Bay game. So look for the weather there. If it's zero, like you said, it could be then Miami's in trouble. So um, the other thing is is the other games on Thursday. I mean, everybody's going to tune in for the Dallas Giant game. Uh, <laughs> why <laughs> yeah right uh and what are the yeah. other thursday games uh you got you got the uh, um green bay and miami oh that's the thursday game okay is that yeah. is that the late game yeah wow yeah. so they're gonna have to play a night game at that weather wow. yeah it's gonna be zero or feel like it and and, and what's the first game 
I mean, the second. Oh, Detroit. Who's Detroit playing? Chicago, right? Chicago. They're they're ten point favorite in that game. Yeah. All right. Well, we got uh, the Lions blowing out the Bears. We got a game nobody wants to watch, and then the best game could be an ugly game because of the weather. And the, the Giants. Sure. The Giants are the one team in football right now that you can absolutely one hundred percent guarantee they've quit on the season. Yeah, that's right there. I can't believe it. But now that Dallas won a game, we could look at that game and go, that's a good play. The thing is, the thing is, why is Dallas playing? They should be looking for draft choices too. Yeah, but they're they're not. I mean, Mike McCarthy, even if he leaves, you know, he wants to win. He's coaching to win. And, you know, the backup quarterback, he's he's trying to win, you know. So they're going to try to win. Yeah. Especially it's a division game. Oh, and, and there's a, a trend – that I always talk about from the, from Mark's uh, magazine. I have it uh, here. It is because I interviewed uh, R.J. Ochoa. That interview is also available at our lads. I, I did the interview with the Dallas uh, Insider. R.J. is really great. He's been following the Cowboys for a long time. He had a, a, a lot of information that we talked about with the coaching mm-hmm. situation and um, you know what they got to do to become better and all that other stuff. So that that's available. Um, how about this? The Dallas Cowboys are 25 and four against the spread. The last 29 division favorite, two or more. Now, the only blemish here to speak about is that they only had, were in that situation once this year and they lost. They haven't won a game at home this year. No, they have not. They have not <laughs> won a game at home, which is another reason why I think they're a good play. Because it's Thanksgiving, they're gonna to want to play. Give their fans something. You know, we got to win a home game. Um, and they beat the Giants seven straight. So, yeah, the line's only four. So you're trying to say Tommy DeVito's not gonna go in there and light it up? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I sh- I, sh- I know I shouldn't say that, but no, you that's can't. What say I'm gonna say. You're talking about it, a fellow Italian kid. You're picking on the Italian kid. <laughs> I know. I have to do it. They're putting them out there, man, on purpose. And it's not a good reason. But Mama can cook, and she cooks for the whole team. Well, they got to get something out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that they got uh, the good. They, it's good they got that. By the way, we get to see Deion Sanders in Colorado uh, try to keep their Big 12 hopes alive on a Friday. Uh, there's a, a ton of big Friday games in college football. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. The Egg Bowls on, on Friday or Thursday? I think Friday. You know, there's a really good game on Thursday. I'll try it. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. It's the Tulane game. I thought that was going to be a good game, but it really doesn't mean anything. Because Tulane's in the uh, championship. So where does, where does Dion and uh, his son go next year? You know, I think I think uh, it, this is this does look like a situation that if Dion is is going to really leave, you would think this makes the most sense because his son is leaving, and maybe there is a package deal there. Um, he's repeat know. he's repeatedly said he's not leaving. It's not going to be Dallas, and if he doesn't leave, you know what? It, that really wouldn't be too much of a surprise because I, I would imagine he's going to get a huge contract extension. I think my dog is telling you that we're done. Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> so we'll talk more about that. Uh, again, we'll be on Wednesday. Uh, Jim uh, will have his early observation video. So look out for that on ProLine TV. Uh, and uh, check us out on Wednesday afternoon. We should have it posted and available uh, to everybody. Uh, the Playbook ATS podcast show on Wednesday, just before Thanksgiving. So uh, we don't have to say happy Thanksgiving to anybody except if for some reason you don't tune in on Wednesday's show, which I can't imagine why you would. Well, happy Thanksgiving anyway. Happy Thanksgiving anyway. I'll talk to you soon, Jim. See everybody. Bye-bye.